Hi, everyone. It's coming. We can see it. They just can't see it yet. Hit play. Hi. Hi, I'm Ar uh, Arthur Bergman, so I'm CEO, and Fastly, uh, CEO of Fastly, uh, which is a edge cloud platform. So we are six years old and um, about 370, 400 people. Uh, and we have servers all around the world uh, where we deliver uh, DDoS protection, acceleration, uh, and security services to a lot of very, very high profile customers. Uh, so in these uh, six years, uh, we have grown quite dramatically. We now do about 400 billion requests per day. And we have tripled our employees and our customers in the last three years and doubled our revenue per customer. And this has led us to be one of the fastest companies to reach um, $100 million of revenue. So that's uh, Fastly. No, serious. Take a seat. Oh, yeah. Let's chat. Yeah, that's the one. Awesome. Okay, we don't have enough time to even begin to scratch the surface. We talked backstage about some really interesting ideas. I want to ask, what are the tricks or the silver bullets to scaling a company that fast? Hard work. Um, focusing on the act of scaling and hiring and actually actively thinking about those, uh, those parts of the business and not just on the product and the technology. So backstage, we talked about the kind of slowing down or speeding up process that you've gone through and also being a global business from day one or very, very early. Can you walk and tell everyone kind of how you did that and the challenges that you had? Yeah, so we, we started in 2011 and we added relatively few people the first two years. We were about 15, 20 after two years and then uh, we took off to 60, 120, 240, um, 290 and then uh, close to 400 now. Uh, and, and we decided very early to be a global business, so we hired people all around the world. We have six offices, and a, a lot of things that you have to deal with when you get large, if you start running a global operation, you have to deal with them much earlier, around communication between different groups, clear line of accountability and responsibility, uh, and that has really helped us as we've grown yeah, even larger. So let's go ahead and address that for fun. Who here thinks the Valley in San Francisco is awesome? Raise your hands. What? It's changing every year. Yeah. It's getting more and more logical. So the idea that you need to be in the Valley and have all of your employees near your investors, all your operations, and then I think you said you have your first overseas office is like two people in London. What's your strategy? Why did you do that early and what advantages have that given you? We, uh, we did it really early because uh, we hired people that were really good remotely, and we had uh, the need to build data centers around the world, and we had customers all around the world. So it was kind of natural to do. Uh, you know, we, we spend most of our time with employees and customers and very little time with our investors, which is uh, what you should be doing. Uh, so while our headquarters are in SF, uh, most of our growth is coming from all around the world. So let's talk about the hack about hiring. So we talked about senior staff and junior staff because it's very challenging to hire enough bodies to deal with that growth. So how did you approach that in terms of your senior talent and how you found them and put them around the world versus where you put your junior team? When we, when we hired people, if you're scaling this fast, it's really hard to hire someone that can be in that job for more than two years because of their experience. So when we hired people, we were very explicit, or I was explicit saying, look, you're gonna get the chance to grow, but most likely, you're gonna be layered. And that's clear from day one, that this is most likely gonna happen. Uh, because the person who can take you from 1 million to 20 is not the person who can take you from 20 to 100, usually. Uh, usually want someone who's seen that larger growth before. Uh, and so, it, it, go back to the hiring, hiring that that allowed us to hire a little bit ahead of time. And on the junior side, uh, we typically hire into one of our other, uh, Portland or Denver, for example, where it's uh, cheaper to live and easier to find talent. It's hard to get people to move to San Francisco. So now let's talk about growing too fast. So you have one office on the other side of the world in Japan, but a lot of offices in the US. But you did go to Europe and you said you made a mistake. You were trying to go too fast. Yeah, I think we, we went into Europe uh, less focused. We opened an office in London, 
but we tried to sell all over Europe and uh, despite the fact that I'm European and should have known better, Europe is not actually one market and you have to address the different markets differently from a legal support customer interaction point of view. So now we've uh, retrenched in Europe, we're focusing on, on UK, uh, the Spanish market and the Nordics to start with. So when you're trying to grow with venture investment, you said you were on what, Series D now? Yeah, we're a Series D slash E, we've raised a total of uh, $180 million. Okay. So you're into it, you're way into the game. How do you manage the need for hyper growth from the investor perspective with the ability to do the basics that are required to build a durable and sustainable company? Because they seem to be at odds with each other. They want you to grow faster, faster, faster. But we talked backstage that the critical areas are actually around building foundational aspects of just being a big, like a normal business. Uh, I, I think that uh, the really good investors aren't at odds with you. They, they've seen this before and they know uh, that if you buy revenue too fast, uh, then most likely things won't survive, they won't go very well. So you know, we've chosen our investors really carefully. Uh, and one of the benefits of growing really fast um, is that you have that luxury, uh, but that has certainly uh, helped a lot. So in the last minute, minute and a half, all of the people out here, I'm sure, have read all the same tabloids and headlines and TechCrunch and everything that we read. But what are those kind of basic tips that you give founders? They all, they all want to get as big as you, right? I mean, that's insane, your growth. But it took a lot of kind of basics. So what are the couple of things you want to make sure everyone kind of cuts through the noise and the bullshit and actually does these couple of things, like two or three tips? Uh, I think one, when you hire, value experience. Uh, very people who've, who've had uh, or gone through uh, similar stages, even though it's not necessarily the same industry as you, adjacent industries as well. Uh, because at the end of the day, a lot of the core parts of growing is actually just building a business. Um, just like you would build any business, and there are people who are very, very good at that, even if they don't know uh, your business. The other one is have a good relationship with your investors. No, I. Uh, I, I regularly ski with my investors. I happily go out for dinner with them. You want investors that you're actually spending time, that you're willing to spend time with, not people that you detest. Uh, I think those are, are really the, the two things that um, uh, people, I, I see people making that mistake. And then if you eventually plan on being a global business, start investing in it early because it, it takes a lot of time. And you know, as I said earlier, if you start and then one day you decide to open London and you're in the Bay Area or you're here and you want to open it in the US and you have two people there, they're not going to be happy, they're not going to be part of the company. And then for Europeans, uh, when you decide to go into the US, just like Europe is not one market, neither is the US. You can't sell to all of the US from New York. You can't sell to all of the US from uh, Chicago or Seattle. Um, you can't sell into New York unless you have an office in New York because New Yorkers look at you crazy. So it, it, when you do the U.S. as well, you have to think of it as separate markets and grow that way. So we're out of time, but just for everyone to look where you're going next. You're in Japan, but where else? Where's the next kind of geo? So we see, uh, you know, we see internet traffic and we see where it's growing really fast. Uh, we opened uh, locations in South Africa, and that's growing extremely fast. Uh, so, uh, the same with um, South, uh, South America. Uh, and so, we think that there is a you know, great need to make the internet faster in those regions, and really cool startups that are uh, you know, purely digital. And so, we're going to start supporting those regions more. Everyone, give it up for our tour from Fastly. And if you guys want to talk hardware, grab me over there. Thanks, guys, so much. Thank you.